questions with that woman. <laughs> hey, who, the, who let this mother in? <laughs> Can't get down now. Where's my robe, boy? I told you. <laughs> How are you guys? <laughs> Big yeah. win for you tonight. Very, yeah. very impressed. How, how did you feel in there? Yeah, I felt really good. I just want to get back in there. As soon as the fight finished, I was like, damn, I want three more rounds. Yeah, it's so fun. Um, God, I wish I didn't like scraps like that because, you know, it's not good for your health long term, but fuck, it's fun. Yeah, um, and I hope I put a good on a uh, good performance. I know I put on a good performance. If I could hear the crowd, man, that crowd was unreal. There was so much energy coming towards us. It was just really awesome having that. It's almost brought me to tears at the end when I was dedicating the fight to my mum because it's just like, yeah, I don't know. Like everyone's got a mum, you know. So I think everyone had an affinity for it. I could almost like feel the crowd being like, yeah, I love my mum too. And I was like, good, <laughs> good. Call your mothers today, everyone. <laughs> Sunday's a good day to call your mum. It's awesome. As impressive it was, obviously you took some damage as well. Yeah, physically, yeah. how are you feeling right now? Yeah, physically I feel good because mentally I'm like, I'm a skyrocket. Um, yeah, just get healed up and then when the doctor gives me the clear, just try to get back on another card. I know there's a room of a card uh, in the middle of the year back here in Aussie, so I'm just looking at that straight away. Yeah, because this is our job, you know, like I want to be in this for at least another seven years, so I'm 32, so I'm not thinking holiday time, I'm thinking two or three more fights this year. Probably here and back over the ditch and maybe try to get a big one at the end of the year in Vegas or something. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. Can you talk about mentally how you did feel in the cage afterwards? Because last time, you know, it was such a weird experience. How'd you feel tonight afterwards? Yeah, uh, real comfortable in there speaking on the mic. Uh, felt like, like I said it before I'm on a, like, a post, it's like, now when I fight, like in the cage, I'm looking over him, I was like, that feels like reality. Like, this feels like not even real enough. Like, it's only, I need to be in there, like, I'm probably turning myself into, like, an adrenaline junkie or something, because, like, that felt like hyper-reality, like, everything's going, like, so fast, but then I come back to, like, normal life, and it's like, damn, I want to get back there, like, get that fixed, but, um, I just feel so happy that, like, I got another fight on my contract, and I smash that dude, and then just keep the ball rolling, keep, keep working up, take the, take Aotearoa to the top of the world and try to keep spreading a good positive message, using this platform for something other than just, like, making money and getting famous. Yeah. You dropped him a couple of times. Were you surprised with? I actually only dropped him once. I dropped him once. A good crack. I cracked him. A good one before that. Sorry, what was your question before? <laughs> oh, were you surprised, like how, how tough he was? Did you expect to finish it? I was surprised at his poker face, to be honest, because I knew he was toughish. But uh, I don't like talking bad about it, because you don't. I don't know the inner workings of any man. I just look at like what they do in a fight, how they react. Woo, you know, like he's pumping himself up. So, in a funny way, it's like he. I feel like he fakes it till he makes it, but he's really good at faking it. Uh, he just didn't make it I don't know what to say but yeah it was like I was surprised when I cracked cracked him a couple and he just didn't um didn't really show that he was hurt uh, until the very end obviously when he got dropped but yeah he was a tough dude tough dude like um I, I nothing but the best for him in his career I, I know he'll come back strong because he from watching his first fight on the Dana White contender series till now like he's improved improved a lot and he's a real awkward style I forget that sometimes like we're training at CKB I train for a lot of like the world's best kickboxers crispy as technique and that forces me to you know perform at a real high level but then sometimes in MMA if you've got a guy who's like like it can kind of mess with you so I was like throwing um trying to come around with like hooks and straights and he just like had this weird like cage style like we I'm used to this sort of stuff like that but it was just um a little bit different a little bit awkward but it's good like a good learning experience I'm sure there'll be plenty of other awkward dudes to fight awkward white boys to fight in the future <laughs> You mentioned just before wanting to do this for something other than money. Tell us a bit about that message you sent. Well, so like, hard thing of it, I'm a 25 year old Caucasian Maori, but back home in my country, uh, per capita, me, like a 25 year old Maori or Maori men or women, they're the highest, uh, they're committing suicide the highest rate in the entire world just based per capita. And that's like, that's messed up. The, one of the most beautiful countries in the world and we've got the highest youth suicide rates. I know last year two kids under 13 that killed themselves bro. Like that's real, that's realer than this, fuck UFC, like any of that shit. If some little kid is killing themselves because of the circumstances that they're going through, why am I here like making like a hundred grand in a fight? Like fuck that, I'd rather give that kid a chance or give him something to be inspired by. So when I went away after my last fight, um, I saw a lot of these kids where I'm from, like, I see the, the environments there, and Auckland's nice where I'm from, it's like a nice, yeah, I've taken myself out of the, the ghetto or whatever, but going back there, they're all beautiful kids and everyone likes to talk smack about where I'm from and trying to be like, oh, you got to wear a bulletproof vest to go through Marae Nui, and I was like, 
that whole mentality is what's wrong with the world. Like, no one wants to help. They just want to be like, oh, I'll just stay up here looking at you guys. And then those are the guys that are killing themselves. And we're just like pretending like it's not happening. So I know it sounds bad to be saying it after a fight, like a big win, like we have the highest youth suicide rates. But I'm going to keep saying that till it's the opposite, till it's not true. Till we have the highest rates of kids like helping each other, you know, the most courted or most, the strongest community as a whole. So I think because New Zealand is like, we're a bunch of warriors, we all just like enjoy fighting culture and for someone to come out like as a fighter and be like, yo, I cry and I look after my mental health and I talk to people, I talk to men and like we talk about emotions and stuff to know that that's all good. Because in a lot of kids' eyes, when I went back to the hood, they were like, bro, you're like the manliest guy I can think of because I fight in the UFC on my tee. You can cry then, it's all good. Like if I can cry and get stronger from it, anyone can do it. You don't have to be a UFC fighter to be tough, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. At the media day, you talked a lot about you being depressed after your last fight. And what did you learn from that? And what will you do different this time to not get in the same? Oh, so, yeah. So it was like I, I've talked about a, like a lot of fighters will know what I'm talking about, like post-fight depression. But it's more like that is a different thing. That's like you've set a goal, and then now that goal's accomplished. Now you're like, oh shit, I thought all this stuff was going to come with it. But I, what I realized was uh, my drive to get to where I am or where I was was uh, it was really superficial i was going there for like money and fame like that was my driving force every day i was like bro it'll all be worth it g because you have heaps of money when you win this fight or whatever and then when i won the fight i was like yeah i did get heaps of money and yeah people did think i was famous but then they'd be talking to me and i'd be like why do i feel so empty so i went back home and and reconnected with my 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 coach uh so my my fano and uh so the i yeah I, I'm, I'm already mentally prepared because i took six weeks off but i was not but it was way harder than any fight camp i've ever been through i've been in, i've had like 43 fights and that six weeks was the hardest because it was real shit. it wasn't it wasn't like just running it was sitting down with my mum, my uncle my koro you know my immediate family and telling them the stuff that's really close to my heart like as soon as i go to say things i'd like start breaking up because it was that uh the emotional connection was to it but instead of like being like oh no fuck it, i'll just uh who cares we'll just move on from that I just kept digging and digging and digging until I put myself like to the rock bottom to find what was there and then I found like oh I still love myself and you know all this good and I have family that love me so I was like thought I was just going to keep going down down and down till nothing was good and then it was like boom so I'm like way up there now and I've really got a clear vision into the future and I'm still ready for because I know life is like ups and downs everything comes in waves so I'm ready for that down I know what to do go back to my family caught it all with my friends and loved ones let outsiders outside of my own body let them tell me that they love me in case I don't love myself enough yeah but ready for it ready for it have you been inspired by like Tyson Fury and Max Holloway about speaking out about the, the I didn't know Max Holloway talked about it. I just well it's funny because I, I even saw Nadia Nassim speaking about it and um I don't I don't think it's like in the last like year and a half it seemed like mental health awareness is like really on the rise and I think it's 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 just a symptom of like it being pushed aside for a long time so I expect the next five years for a lot not just in fighting but in a lot of different industries where people are gonna be like oh wow as much as we like to pretend like hard science and we're sorry I keep just I'm not doing my hands um, as much as we like to pretend like everything on the surface and you can do things and you're not gonna have any emotional attachment to it now we know about how water you know everything is connected so um, I think it's good I think it's really good and yeah I am inspired I I guess some um, I didn't know anyone was doing this stuff before I did it in my mind even when I came out with the Tino Rangatira flag I thought no I had no role models um, so I became the role model that I wanted as a kid and um, I think it's just good that other people are doing that for other kids as well. because I'm, I'm not saying I'll be the only one to do it we need everyone to be doing because there's seven billion people on this world they're not all gonna see me fight see that video and be like yeah I'm gonna I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna make that choice now Shane I will I will like reach out to someone like we need it you know every fight card almost someone's got to be talking about it because as tough as we are we inspire a lot of young kids you know and for them to look at us being really tough they'll be like oh man I'm not as tough as him I cry when I go to bed or something it'd be awesome for them to be like oh he's just like me but he's just 25 now or I can be tough like that when I get old as well so I just want to keep it up just keep pushing as well. Uh, what did Israel think about Whitaker coming out? 
you spoke to him about it? Um, he has nothing but respect for all fighters, so he, yeah, he is just respectful, so he would just know. Oh, I think all he asked was like, so I'm getting the pay-per-view points, right? <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, homie. Oh, I didn't pump him up on the fight. Damn. <laughs> Sorry, mum got all the credit this time. <laughs> yeah, all good. I hope everyone tunes in for the pay-per-view. It's going to be epic, yeah. Shane, given what you went through. Yes, Woo! Yes, my man! Yeah, boy! Shot brothers, shot brothers! Bam Bam and Tyson, good kids. Good lads. Yeah, just, just given what you went through in the past seven months, did it make this win that much more special? Because I already was like, I already won once I came back to the gym, eh? Because I said I was seriously was not going to fight. I was either fully commit my life to fighting, because I was half asking it for the last couple of years, to be honest. Even when I got in the UFC, even before Singapore, I was kind of half asking it, bro. Like, just not committing fully to like committing the rest of my life to it. I was like, oh, no, no, I can be selfish and do this and that. But um, so once I came back and I told Eugene, fully serious that this is it, that's I already won. So regardless of the result, I was just, I'm gonna keep pushing using MMA, this platform of the UFC to, to keep inspiring. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess the big thing was like dedicating it to my mum, bro. That was like huge, because I reconnected heaps with my mum while I was in that time because I just had a single mum growing up and anyone that's had a single parent growing up and a young parent, she was only 21 when she had me, 16 when she had my brother, but he passed away. It was real hard on her and I went through a lot of messed up. It wasn't even messed up, but I thought it was at the time, but then I was like, bro, she was only 26 when that happened. You're 25, imagine having a little child crying, being like, mom, why can't I get this and this and that? And she had to like deal with that. So like, I have a, like so much more respect for my mom now, so much more love for her, so. I guess that was like a big thing when I, I remember th out the back I was like just remember because I didn't have any speech prepared I was like just remember you got to dedicate it to your mum and I was like oh, 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 like taking a, a mummy and I was like oh, oh shut up okay just win that fight if you ever all I thought was like if there's any ever point where I was like oh you know you kind of have to dig like you can either stay here or you can move it was like think about like you have to have that post fight speech so there was one time where I was like kind of like at the end of the third round there was two minutes left and I was like man I'm a little bit Freak. And I was like, I just went away straight away because like, you're winning this fight. So I just went in 2 3 2, and uh, that was it. It was only that one moment where I was like, fuck, I'm a little bit, a little bit tired, but mama had me. <laughs> and what are you looking for for your next fight? Are you on I know there's a card happening here in Aussie in June or July. I know more details, I'm just not allowed to say, but I'll be back in June or July. I got my birthday in July, so I'll definitely have another UFC fight before I turn 26. Damn, four before I turn 26. I thought I was only going to be in the UFC at 26. That was always my goal. I've always hit goals like a year, two years before they happen. So 2022 is when I said I'll have a world title fight. So just stay watch, stay tuned. Thank you. I mean, that's a, a fantastic mustache, by the way, bro. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Can I grab you real quick?